Hi there, welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. This is one of our gun study videos, and this time it's two for the price of one. Uh, partly because we're too lazy to take them off the mount, or it's too complicated. So what we're going to be covering is, and having a really close look at, is the Vickers gas operated guns. Two of the ones that we have in the collection. And this is the pair that sort of stay together really. They are um, mounted on a reproduction mount that suits a special air service Jeep towards the end of 1944. Um, and that's sort of what they've been used for as displays. Uh, but clearly the Vickers gas operated machine gun, um, we've got a, a video that covers sort of its use and its wider um, functions, uh, but it was originally an aircraft gun, uh, high rate of fire, you know, 100 round magazine. Uh, we'll I don't wanna to go through too many of the characteristics. The purpose of this video is to just, yeah, we'll get the camera off the stand like we do and have a look at the markings, um, the, the, the sort of the accessories we'll take a bit of a closer look at as well. And have a really good look around the guns, um, a little bit inside as well, but you know, not too much. Um, and just try and explain, you know, try and learn something from the guns that may well be of use to uh, watchers as well. So we'll do two guns at once. Um, they are the same mark. They are the gas operated number one Mark one, um, or sorry, yeah, number one Mark one. Uh, which you'll also know there were five number variants of the VGO. Um, yeah, let's say these are the same. These are the basic Vickers gas operated gun that was fitted to aircraft and then used, uh, fitted to Jeeps and the like. Now, the eagle eyed amongst you will notice I've put the magazine back on the gun uh, so that we can sort of show a little bit more about that. But before we go into anything further it's always nice to have a look at the serial numbers and the markings so Vickers GO mark one so that's Vickers gas operated and this is number a41175 and then on the other side we have oh, Vickers gas operated mark one number a25547 so not too many apart now there's no dates on these uh, I've always sort of assumed or, or tried to calculate that these are sort of 1941 1942 production um, I don't know on what basis that is. I'll have to dig into my research notes, but uh, it may have come from somewhere. Now, A41175 was the first uh, VGO we bought into the collection. And the story that came with it, we've got no evidence of such, but it is came from off the wall of the Artist Rifles Club at the uh, National Shooting Center at Bisley. So has some potential lineage to the Special Air Service in the 21 SAS uh, are the Artist Rifles. Um, now, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean it's wartime SAS. It doesn't mean it's SAS at all, obviously, uh, but it doesn't mean it's wartime SAS. They were used post-war on uh, Land Rovers even um, until the Series 2A Pink Panther Land Rover came along and replaced them with the general purpose machine gun, which was then in service. So they do have a bit of lineage, um, but yeah, so, so maybe that one came, you know, has some SAS history. We don't know for sure. Uh, but yeah, not too many uh, apart from those. So it, it's nice to see that they, they are marked up the same. There's nothing really to, to, to set them apart from, from that. And it's nice to see the nomenclature um, you know, marked up as well on those. Uh, let's take the magazines off or the one magazine. As I said, the mounts are reproduction. I'm not really going to uh, go into it too much, but it does, uh, you know, it does for work and function. Now the magazine you can see there, VAC Mark One, Vickers Armstrong's Crayford, um, or Vickers Armstrong Corporation, maybe at that point. Mark One is the main marking on there. But if we go onto the back plate, there we've got an MC, which is Monotype Corporation. Now, Monotype Corporation were not part of Vickers. Um, they were a completely separate company, but they made Bren mags. Um, they, they were, sorry, they were um, contracted to make Bren magazines. And you'll notice the similarities between the drum magazine for the Vickers and the drum magazine for the Brens. Uh, there are common components. It's mainly the bottom plate that is different. Um, they were attempting to uh, work out whether these would work in some way with an adapter, but that wasn't the case. Uh, so the trials report sort of for you know, deaf ears at that point. Um, but some of the parts are clearly interchangeable. And I would hazard a guess, uh, well not hazard a guess, you know, the, the MC were contracted to produce magazines and um, 
uh, for, for the VGO and for the Bren because they could produce both. But if we look on the top plate, I did spot it a minute ago, we've got VAC, albeit upside down, VAC stamped there as well. So this is a mishmash of Vickers Armstrong components and, um, you know, and Monotype Corporation components on that one. Uh, this one over here has the same, I think. I think we've got VAC on the top plate there. Ooh, get it refocused, there we go. Uh, and Monotype Corporation on the back two teeth there as well. I don't think this one is marked underneath. This has got a bit of pitting, a bit worse condition. This is the one that actually came with the, um, let's call it the SAS gun. Uh, this is the one that came with that. So I don't think we've got any other, uh, other markings or anything on there. Now, you sometimes see these with like painted white bands and stuff, but you can see that some are blued. Um, if you look at those, some are blue. Yeah, this one's been blued. I don't think it's been re-blued. Some have been uh, left. Um, just with a, a you know, bare metal or a, you know, it's non-ferrous, so it's not going to rust. Um, it's, yeah, it's in, in, interesting to see the two, two different mags. We have a number of mags in the collection. We could do a comparison of those at some point, I'm sure. And then we get into the deflector cases, and we've got um, VA, so Vickers Armstrong's Mark II. It's the Mark II deflector case. I don't think there's any... Um, Mark, uh, we've got Mark II on there as well. So yeah, we've got Mark II on the deflector case, which is quite nice. Um, yeah, the, the, to have the deflector cases with these is great. They came along later uh, than the guns themselves. Um, is the other one the same? Yes, there it is, VA and Mark II with the broad arrow next to it as well. And um, oh, we've got a VA. A VA on there, and that's a Vickers Inspector stamp. Recognise those from all the spare parts we've got. Uh, and again, yeah, we've got that on here. Um, the way these work is you've got this push pit at the rear, and it falls away like that. Um, it's held on by a pin at the bottom. So, yeah, they've got you've got no markings or anything underneath that. You can see the ejection port there. Um, but when you cock the gun, comes back. Obviously, these are our two deactivated guns. Um, that we have in the collection, hence why there's not much point looking inside them. People will just get upset by the cuts. Uh, but you can start to see, okay, VAC markings here and another of the V over and then a number. So if you ever see V over a line and then over a number, uh, that's one of the Vickers um, internal factory inspection quality assurance marks. It's not... Um, a, uh, you know, it's not ordnance stamps. Um, you can see another one there, look, V over 176. Um, yeah, with it, as I say, they're there. And we got that same one, same one there, V over 176. So yeah, they're not, uh, they're not military at this point. You know, they're clearly acceptance stamps from the factory onto a military gun, but they're not ordnance marks. So yeah, you'll see those on lots of spare parts. Um, it's that V over means that it was made by Vickers. Uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, V for Vickers. Um, what else have we got? I'm inspired. You can see the tooling on these where it's all milled out. You know, it's not finished, um, but there's a lot of material that's been milled out of this receiver, which is always quite interesting to see. And then we've got some markings here. Ignore the markings here on these bolts. Um, but we've got the A70 in a circle um, onto this piece uh, here. A70 VV8 perhaps or A10. Not sure. That's probably, um, you know, that looks to be like a uh, parts stamp maybe. Not really sure on that one. Um, this is a deactivation stamp, so late 90s deactivation. Uh, this one doesn't have the sights on it. Now what we've seen from yeah, loads of photos is the sights are really bizarre on, well not bizarre, uh, varied as to, as to the, how many sights, what sights, um, whether both guns have sights, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll turn the gun around properly so you can have a look at that one in a moment. Now what have we got over on this? Anything in the same places, you know, guns, which is always interesting to see whether you know, inspectors stamp in the same places or not. We've got a V and an over um, something there. Different V A, is that a V A C or a V A N? Or maybe just a V A that's had a slip over a, 
a one zero something, so maybe a VAN, which uh, is a marking that we're not 100% sure of what that is. So we don't know whether it's Vickers Armstrong's uh, North, uh, Newcastle. I mean, the Vickers had a, a, a very strong presence in Newcastle, so it might be VA Newcastle, um, where they'd have made components uh, for these. I don't think they made whole guns, but we've seen feed blocks and other, um, other parts marked up with that VA. And uh, uh, if it is that, over 100, so that might just be the inspector's mark from that. It's over a broad arrow. You'll see the broad arrow there, which is the ordnance inspection acceptance mark. Um, going down the gun. Anything once we release that, I don't think so. You can see that mark two and that VA and a V over um, stamp there. What are we got in here? Anything much again? VAC there, look, Vickers Armstrongs, as I say, normally Crayford, um, I think it would be Crayford, they might have just, well, VAC definitely is Crayford, it's whether they changed the difference to v Vickers Armstrong Corporation and did it elsewhere, uh, V over inspection stamp in there, and then a 116 as well, T double stamp, look, V over 116, over a V over 116, somebody got carried away with a stamping hammer, and there's the other deactivation mark too. Um, on this side, we have a simple ring and bead sight. Nothing more than that. Uh, unsure of the lineage of these, you know, as to whether they are original. Clearly, that should have a little pin in there to keep it in. Um, there is some talk that if these were uh, screwed, then they were um, they've been fitted for uh, for Jeep, so they don't. It'll come out uh, or if they're smooth then uh, just for aircraft not really sure about that um, interesting point when we're up here though we can see you see these five two eight six is the barrel serial number on there and on this one is a three five four one five five four one so they're the barrel serial numbers they've obviously had replacement barrels as they differ from oh, that's two five five four seven that might be 25547 actually. Yeah, I'd, yeah, that's A25547. What was this? This is 41175. And that is definitely not 41175. That's A25286. So that's off of a different gun originally. Um, yeah, so you know, so so great to, to be able to to see you know, guns put together but at the same time to see that the original barrel on that gun um anything up at the ends here that we can spot no not really is there um there might be some markings on there what's we got there i can't really see it looks like a v over bit bit a bit mashed um, because of the, maybe a VAC, because of the curvature of the barrel. Um, or, no, it's it's the deactivation stamp, sorry. Uh, DA there. Um, that one's just a bit mashed, uh, again, let's say, because of the curvature of the barrel. Um, right, let's turn the guns round. So they're turned round. We'll start at the muzzle, work backwards. There's nothing really. I, hope it, yeah, I know I'm waffling away. This is the first time I look at the guns in detail as well. So sometimes it's it's as interesting for for me as it is for you. Yeah, and these are let's say unrehearsed. Um, you can see this horrible blob of weld there that needs uh, dealing with. Um, yeah, that one that one's fine. Um, what's that? Sorry, I just spotted these markings here, and that is uh, V over fifteen or probably one one six again. Um, if somebody had a, you know, if they were the inspector to go around the gun, they knew where they had to. Um, had to check and inspect on what they would be inspecting. The over 47, sometimes guns pass up the line and you'll see various inspectors. Uh, yeah, without, you know, or lots of different um, inspection stamps on them. Uh, Cox from the you know, left-hand side on the, uh, on the VGO, which is, was quite interesting. Um, this seems to be quite a rudimentary sight mount. Uh, for for the gun, um, this dovetail that fits in there. Yeah, there were lots of different variants. This actually folds down as well, so you know it's it or, or can be fold, folded down. Um, 
yeah, I mean, it, we're not sure on the originality of that, but they came with um, a lot of original components. So maybe they were just a later edition or a locally made edition. Um, yeah, nothing on the nothing on the left hand side of the gun at all, is it? That's what have we got in that bottom piece there? Uh, maybe some stamps in there, or maybe just some vice vice marks, perhaps. Yeah, interesting to see how there's relatively little, but you can see again this milling and and the um, you know how they were removing the material from it. It's always quite I do like a, a nice bit of machined machinery milling. Um, what else have we got in on that other gun then? So again, this is that the SAS gun as I call it. Nothing really to add. Look, yeah, I mean everything was on the right hand side, or a lot of things were on the right hand side of the guns. We do have that um, similar mark up there that we do on the left hand gun. Um, nothing on that spring. A single sort of big stamp uh, on there, which looks like a C. And then this one looks like a V. Maybe they were just big stamps of, um, for some reason that we don't quite know. Oh, okay, so I'm going to call it a day there. I think that's all the stamps that um, exist. Hopefully that's been interesting for you. You know, as I said, go and look at our, um, I'll just to say, these stamps that are on the top of the breech blocks there are obviously the deactivation stamps. Um, ho yeah, hopefully that's a bit of interest. Please go and look at the sort of the, the longer vid where we explain, you know, the use and, and everything of the VGO. Clearly these are quite popular guns. Um, so we'll share some uh, videos in the future of them firing uh, where we have access to those and, uh, you know, other, other things as well. So please do support us on Patreon. Um, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, you know, just, uh, you know, try and help out the association where you can. Please do come and visit us in Swindon, Wiltshire in the UK if you're able to.